it's just, I just want to keep it simple, stupid, as they always say, right? So it's it's Caleb Williams. He's by far like he's up there with the Andrew Luck tier of prospects. Like he's does everything anybody could want. Like he produced coming in, like and he stayed consistently one of the best quarterbacks in the nation. I get it. There are some issues on the flip side. He holds the ball a little too long. Cause you know, he's trying to make those like quote unquote. I know the the lazy comp is the Mahomesian plays, but he's one of the few guys that can get out of structure. And do those things with his arm where you're like, that's not something a quarterback should be able to do. So you pair his in-pocket ability. He doesn't take sacks. He really ways find ways to get out and make plays happen. It's just overall, he's like the ideal quarterback. So if I was a team looking for a quarterback and in this rookie draft, it's like Caleb Williams. Like I'm doing everything I can, can I I can to get up to that one on one to get Caleb Williams. I think he's that special of a quarterback for myself personally. So you hit the nail right on the head. The one negative that you said about him was that he holds the ball too long. And immediately that was my impression from watching his tape and from watching uh, some of the game tape on him. Absolutely he holds the ball too long trying to make plays that – that's fine in college. That's just not going to work on an NFL level, especially if you get drafted by, let's just pretend he goes to the Bears with that offensive line. Like, that's not going to be, you're not going to be able to do the same kind of things. And the biggest thing for me is the mentality does strike me as a little bit Bo Callahan esque. It, it is here. very much, you know, and that's a comp from draft day for anyone out there who doesn't know what I'm talking about. Uh, famously in the movie draft day, like the number one overall quarterback, they question his true mentality, like when shit's going wrong. And we've kind of already seen Caleb not react in the best way in that situation. And the NFL is just going to be a whole lot of that. Uh, and, you know, shout out to my guy, Dustin Ludke, who's been on the show several times, uh, asked his question in a most unfortunate way. If people were rattled by that, just wait till he's actually like having bad games at an NFL level and see what kind of questions he starts getting from the regular annoying ass reporters out there. Uh, Cause they're going to be a lot less kind to him, I think. And really I'm, I'm very nervous about, where he lands, like if he does land in Chicago, I don't believe in that coaching staff to elevate his game and kind of, you know, make him, you know, Andrew Luck retired early for a reason, like because mm-hmm. the Colts never properly built the O-line and like the coaching was never the greatest and they just didn't take care of him. And ultimately Andrew Luck actually never truly was what he was supposed to be at the end of the day. He had some very awesome moments. Mm-hmm. Again, retired early for a reason. Never hit the true peaks that I think people expected from the next Peyton Manning. You know what I'm saying? And Caleb Williams is giving me a lot of those vibes. It's making me nervous. And that's why I actually think Jaden Daniels, who is a lot of people's number two, he's my number one. And a lot of it comes down to the mechanics. His mechanics versus Caleb Williams – First of all, not only is he, yeah, he's a little thin because he's 6'4", and I think 2'10", but he's faster, he's quicker, he's more lateral. But he's also just, like, again, in the pocket, better mechanics. He's taking less steps on his dropbacks. He's taking less steps on his rollouts. That's huge at the NFL level. Uh, The golden rule almost for quarterbacks these days is like the Tom Brady rule of three seconds and out. Mm-hmm. From the time you snap the ball, you have three seconds before a D, uh, an NFL defender is on your back and effing up the play. And he has the ability to run through that part of the offense. But then when he's doing his scrambles, yes, sometimes they're on designed runs. And then he's like, he pop. I, he popped a design run for like 75 yards up the left hash. That's the kind of thing he can do with his speed. But more impressively, a lot of his design, his runs are actually coming on scrambles where he's climbing the pocket, realizing nothing is there run. Cause I have this eight to 10 yards. And then the one thing I want to see him do at the next level is slide a little bit more. After you get that first down, you don't need to go get the extra 
10 to 15 yards, just as soon as you get that first down, you're two yards past his slide. Like that's if he starts doing that, it's gonna be insane. And I actually think because of where he potentially lands versus where Caleb Williams lands and you know, kind of the different expectations. I actually think Aiden Daniels could have a better career. And in terms of we're talking about fantasy, he's going to have the rushing yardage, I feel like, right away, where Caleb Williams may not necessarily have that. And that's going to give him the boost where if I'm betting which one finishes higher in the QB ranks in terms of fantasy, I'm going to bet on Jaden Daniels probably more than I'm going to bet on Caleb Williams. Yeah, and – no, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off there. But, yeah, I I like a lot of what Janos Daniels offers, but the floor is just significantly lower with him. When we talk about guys, like, with sacks to pressure rate, Jaden Daniels has an eerily similar to a guy from – that I just played for Chicago, and that's Justin Fields. They're, like, doppelgangers on that aspect. Like, you can scramble and you can avoid pressure, but if you take sacks, they're killers for you. So, like, I think the thing is, like, I'm comp- more copying him to, like, the Justin Fields type player because – He's not a finished product, and I get it. He's a little bit older, so he's he's got a few years on Caleb Williams. But he has the one really, really high-end peak season, which he just won the Heisman. Like, that's one of the best quarterback seasons you'll ever see. Outside of that, like, the floor is a lot lower than it was with Caleb Williams. Like, Caleb Williams' play ever since he stepped on the field was, like, about a 9 out of 10 the entire time. Jaden Daniels was all over the place. He had a season at Arizona where he had, like, over 10 interceptions, turned the ball over a lot, um, and this was a few years ago. He transfers over and he gets like the playmakers that he lacked at Arizona State. I mean, he did play with Ricky Pearsall and stuff like that. He was a good player at Florida, but that's here neither here nor there. He's playing with Malik Neighbors, you know, who's going to be a top five pick. He's playing with Brian Thomas Jr. He's playing with those guys. So I'm more curious to see if those guys were elevating him this last year or if it's the flip side, if he was elevating them. And it's really hard to say just because we don't know because those guys were just superior talents. Where the one thing he does really well on my part of is his deep ball. His deep ball is fantastic. Like that's the thing that you see on tape where you he can chuck it and you have these guys who are burgers down the field. Like that's a match made in heaven. Um, he does like he does like take some sacks, and that's the biggest issue. So that's my main concern with him. And some of his reads, he's a little bit behind on plays. So he just needs to clean it up. Like, and he's gonna go to a team like more than likely or not, Washington or the Patriots. The Patriots is a little bit more worrisome just because they have no talent, but that he's a good player. And to your point about rushing, yeah, his rushing floor is a lot higher just because of the athlete he is. But I described, like, I think Danny Kelly said it. It's like watching a car crash, like watching him run because you see him make these plays, and then he goes across the middle and absolutely gets blasted. <laughs> and you're like, dude, you can't do this. you got to get down. you got to learn how to be more Russell Wilson on that aspect. So if he can do that and save himself from these vicious hits in the NFL, like, I think he'll have a long, productive career. So, yeah, I have him at two. I like him a lot. I just – I can't get there with um, over Caleb, but you know what? That's what this is all about because you know we like each other. One of these guys. No, and I love everything you said because I have all of those negatives in my description. The exact same thing you said. Uh, needs to slide more. He is decisive, but his you know his placement, his awareness sometimes could be a little bit better. I have the exact same thing about neighbors and Thomas jr. Who I'm absolutely in love with. I have ranked higher than most. Mm -hmm. Uh, So like I asked the same thing. Is this a situation of was neighbors and Thomas elevating him past where I think, but really for me, it came down to, you know, I test and the mechanics and like, I go back to, you talk about taking sacks. I think what translates at that next level is his, skill set like i said the the agility and the quickness and the mechanics the way he was having his steps in the pocket versus caleb williams caleb williams too often i was watching do five to seven foot uh step drop backs and and then trying to roll out and like trying to do this trying to do that and again that works at the college level and he will have flash plays even at an nfl level because his arm is that good and Mm -hmm. this isn't to take away from caleb williams but I question if he ends up being the one taking more sacks at the next level. And then I also, like I said, question the mentality and toughness. Cause like, you know, as much as Jaden Daniels had his struggles, it's like, he, it's almost like he just kept on smiling, finally landed in a good spot and, you know, had his best season. And I'm actually, I think Washington is going to take him because I think Caleb Williams is going to go one. I do think Washington is just going to end up taking Jaden Daniels at two, and the Patriots are going to have to settle for whoever's there at three. 
So that's kind of how I'm projecting that out. And if he lands in Washington, I really love it because I think they're an underrated team in terms of the talent that's already there. When you talk about Terry McLaurin and Brian Robinson in the backfield, you have some pieces to work with. They can add other things. Um, you know, they're, they're bringing in, uh, I think they brought in Kingsbury to replace the enemy that I'm a little iffy on, but ultimately it seems like they're going with a change. And I think, Kingsbury specifically even mentioned that he wanted a mobile quarterback, which to me is like almost saying like, I'm taking Jaden Daniels if he's there. If by some act of God, it ends up being Caleb Williams for some reason, I don't see that really happening, but I think he'd be fine with either or, but I think he's basically signaling that, yeah, we're taking Jaden Daniels at two. So I'm projecting it as such a little bit. I feel like with the quarterbacks, it's a little more – easy to see how that plays out whether it's a team that trades or it's chicago themselves that takes caleb and then Jaden goes too i feel like that's for me it's pretty locked and i'd be really surprised if anything else happened beyond that 